needs to so, fit everything through. Yeah, it's tough. It's a tough thing because, like, so I'm going to go, well, there's so many studies. There's so many studies about how coffee is great and people who drink coffee live longer. But we know that those studies are done on degenerate people uh, with very little control for meaningful variables. Right. So I kind of just go off of, I test. I've tested not drinking coffee for an extended period of time. I've obviously tested drinking coffee for uh, I'm sure a, lot of, a lot of times. This hits home it's for a lot of people, but everybody likes coffee. What's that? It hits home for a lot of people because we all like coffee. So I want to know the results, man. What happened? Yeah. Uh, you know, I the only real thing I noticed is that I'm I'm a little more like, I guess I don't have to work so hard to get into the like relaxation, doing nothing state when I don't drink coffee regularly. Uh, okay. So I know it, 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 now I'm talking this out loud. Like I guess I do understand that there is a, some detriment to drinking this. Right. But uh, ultimately, I don't think that my ability to like as tune into the boring, as they say, is uh, it's affected, but not to the point where it. Uh, outweighs the, the benefit that I feel I get from the coffee. Cool, man. So the when it comes to the coffee, the central piece really, in, at least in my opinion, what I understand from it is the dehydration aspect. And the hydration of our tissue is so fundamental to being functional. So when we talk about dysfunction, sure. we could talk about dehydration. We could talk about yeah. adhesions, hyperflacidity, uh, just being disconnected, right? Like if something is really able to move a whole lot and nothing else reciprocates the movement, you could call that a hyperflaccid movement. Yeah. Yep. If it's yeah, moving moving without it's like uh, without a, uh, like a how do I say it? Without a paired like potentiation. Right there, that's you a, go. That's how I pick up hyper hyperflaccid hyperplacidity. It's kind kind of it's, like it's so important to like break these terms down into small chunks where you can explain to your clients or your family or your friends when you're trying to get them to notice. Like uh, Natty said something a long time or not a long time ago, a little while back, where he's like, yeah, "It's really important that your your clients or like the the, the subject of the stimulus understands their uh, understands biomechanics." specifically it's like a prerequisite to actually improve yes he and said and so profound he said you you cannot correct the dysfunction without understanding it essentially yeah yeah yep and that's been huge like just getting my uh i coach a uh, handful of high school athletes well we do functional patterns i don't know how coaching i don't know what that you word can, means you anymore. can say that <laughs> but uh uh just like getting them to understand see their their track girls and volleyball girls uh, I got a baseball player. And just like seeing their, uh, like the, the frame, the position, as they really are, like with the contractile potential, and be like, hey, look, you're, uh, you're hyperflaccid in this joint. That's why your pec is always getting super tight after a pitching session, or like just getting them to understand the like true rules of how they're moving has been so profound. And I mean. Right. I moved away from, from Omaha and then came back, and this time around, just using that, uh, understand the dysfunction as the, as the foundation for, for, their, for their growth. It's amazing it's what, you, what you can do for people, man. And so there's things, and we'll get to myofascial release, right? There's, yeah. there's problem areas, like you say, after a pitching session, my pec feels tight, but then there's silent yeah. areas to where maybe yeah. you're hyperflaccid somewhere in the left left knee, left uh, glute, and then all of a sudden your pec is taking more of a beating, and you yeah. might think, okay, I need to release my pec, but you don't. You need to release the, the silent area, not necessarily the yeah. problem area. Yeah. My lumbar is uh, my lumbar is, lumbar is my silent area. I was messing around with some new stuff the other day, and just didn't, it didn't really account for it, the, like sacrum. Uh, and the uh, lumbar spine positioning, and I just you got beat up. wrecked myself. I'm yeah. saying, man, but it's good because at least that gives you feedback. And I was thinking about how, yeah. how painful it is to watch the videos, bro, especially some of the slow mos. You're like, oh, this is awful. Yeah. But yeah, just embrace that, man. Eat it. And then. Well, it's, uh, if you choose to not, like, 
ignore the fire alarm. It's almost the best. It's the best data. My buddy and I, who, who also does functional patterns, we talk about this a lot. Like pain is pain is such good data oh. for for figuring out what you need to do next. Like you were talking about, oh, you feel it in your pack. You can learn about your silent area through pain uh, very like very efficiently. So it's uh, yeah, man, pain is uh, almost a blessing. Yeah, it's no, like, not almost. It definitely, definitely is. It's a signal, bro. It's a, it's a signal from your body, yeah. but you have to be wise to it too. Because if you don't understand the idea that there could be silent areas or the myofascial meridians, how everything is connected to each other, then you might not know yeah. that. Like, okay, if I'm having issues with my pec, let me check the rest of the anterior obliques link. Let me, yeah. you know, let me check the spiral line. So when you say, when you say, uh, like silent areas for yourself. How literally do you mean that? Like for me, I've noticed that I have parts of my body that are uh, as good as numb, as far as um, the like qualities of. I don't know. You can when you feel that stretch through through a part of your body, you feel that elastic potentiation. You like, oh wow, that's a characteristic of sensation that I didn't consider before. I have tons of parts of my body that don't ever experience that. Is that a similar? Uh, yeah, definitely, definitely, man. And for the longest time, I just hammered out the problem areas before I ever came to the idea or the understanding. I think it was uh, even after Human Foundations that I come to that. Yeah. So the the silent yeah. areas are like they don't they don't hurt you, they don't pain you, but like you're saying, they're not potentiated. So if you if you're able to see that, then you can identify it as a problem area. If if you're not able yeah. to feel that though. And the thing is, too, man, a lot of times we're walking around and we're just, like, barely paying attention to what we're doing. We're not really feeling yeah. it to our body. We might be on the phone, might be this, that. And I think it's very valuable to just take a walk without your phone. Try to see what your body oh, yeah. feels like. Yeah, that's, like, what my whole uh, my whole thing has been over the last month or so. So I moved out to uh, Nebraska. I'm living in between Omaha and Lincoln. And, uh, I'm in a tent, just trying to spend as much time outdoors, trying to like sync up with the environment. I guess you could say. Yeah. Like the more, I don't know. The deeper you go in the, the stuff, the so dude. I, I've already achieved some results with myself that I'm I could didn't think I would be able to like in a lifetime, and it happened so fast. So right. I'm pretty. I don't know. I'm pretty willing to like see this through and see how far we could go maybe that means I th- stopping coffee too <laughs> but uh it could be for it could I'm, be further than I'm we just think so man. excited to see like what it off what 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 else the uh like harmonizing with your environment has to offer in terms of quality of life i'm right. super so excited about it now we're kind of talking about circadian rhythm right like waking up at yeah. the right time going outside getting the early morning sunlight Breathing the morning air, yeah. too, because there's a completely different atmosphere in the morning. The plants have been doing their nighttime thing. And yeah, I never thought of that. Also, just, That's like, sweet. softening yourself to actually take in the environment, which is, like, that shit sounds nebulous like dysfunction. But honestly, <laughs> if you just, like, really open your eyes and, like, look at everything. Because nowadays, bro, I think about everything more as, like, like electromagnetic stuff. So... If if a color yeah. if the color is on the spectrum, it's a certain wavelength, right? So if I look at green, it's going to do yeah. something different to me than if I look at red or pink. And yeah. so just like really yeah. trying to soften myself and feel into like what happens when I'm out in the morning and the sunlight hits the trees, that that sort of. So thing. even even like uh, one layer on top of that, like you're looking at colors and understanding that's part of a field that you're observing and are a part of. I think of when I'm out in nature, I see the uh, like the sigils of nature versus the sigils of the like created world, and you see the I don't know it's just seeing the um, like the repetition of those natural sigils and just recognizing like okay this is the real stuff. Yeah, that's the, that's the real deal, that, uh, bro. Like, it's the spirals. Like the Burger King logo and like, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just looking out around me like Chevy. You see Chevy all the time. Like, mm. that's not exactly um, like what our filters are built 
to like strain almost. I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense or. I'm I'm diving that, I'm but. diving in with you, bro. Listen, like I <laughs> I love sitting under a tree and just watching like the way that the branches cross each other, and it can't yeah, yeah. I can't help sure. but feel like that shit looks like my blood vessels, and. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's impossible once when you're in it for long enough. It's impossible to not see the like rules of the game expressing themselves everywhere. Yeah. Even even every, we talked about this last time, but just places you would never think. Uh, like we were talking about the way that the like uh, in gate when you are transferring force, like the wave functions of the elastic dynamic reciprocation. Like what? Ha- what that really uh, would be visualized like if you put it out on a graph? It's uh, beautiful, and you see it everywhere all the time. It, yeah, it's if a, you look at it. <laughs> it's spirals, bro. The spirals are everywhere. So when they say tune into the boring, I think that's what they mean, man. Like to notice those little little details that people look over. Yeah. Tune into the like yeah. people are bored without their phone, just walking around, feeling their body. They're bored being outside in the sun, looking at trees and stuff. Yeah. Tune into the boring is a great phrase, man, because it re- and even, you know, they're bored thinking about, OK, well, I got to keep my shoulder here and make sure I rotate this way. And they get bored and tune yeah. into the boring, man, because it's more exciting to do some simple shit where you could just listen to, uh, you know, whatever, listen to whatever, forget, zone out. It doesn't matter what I'm really doing. Mm-hmm. I'm just standing up and down. I could do that all day. Yeah. No, yeah, I feel you. I, uh, yeah, uh, I don't really have anything to add. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the spirals, man, is really what, what we see all over the place. And we oh, mentioned that the telephone yep, pole yep. that you think is straight, you cut it down and you see spirals inside of it. And yep. like your arm, which you think is straight, if you were to look at the fascia inside of your arm, you would see these beautiful geometries. Oh, yeah. And I just, so when I... I think I, when I'm like working out, it almost feels like I'm like brushing my fascia <laughs> in line and just like making it nice and pretty and lay lay straight. Uh, I don't know. We, we talk a uh, talk a little bit about aesthetics and symmetry and how that all plays into the game, and it's it's uh, undeniably part of it. I think a lot of the early messaging that came from uh, the functional patterns, like marketing. Right was like it's just the aesthetics where, where I think now they're talking about like no aesthetics are definitely part of it and you know I guess looking back they probably weren't saying ditch, ditch the aesthetics they were probably saying ditch the like attachment and the like right. the, the, the vanity because here's, uh, here's the thing bro. with pursuit of aesthetics yeah it's, and you can definitely get aesthetics and be functional like honestly i think that the reason people oh, yeah. chase a certain excuse me chase a certain look is because it hints at a functionality that may not be there and so one of yeah. my favorite things that he had said Naudi, is that the position that you see the tensions that get you there are what really matters and the tensions yeah. are always going to be with you because like we said your fascia is basically the recording of all the movements that tensions that you've experienced over your life. Yeah. So there's an interesting thought I've had like over the past couple of years with functional patterns and just like body image and, and what that all means. So you have like uh, women and girls that uh, have body shapes that are in within the social like paradigm are acceptable, but they still develop these uh, body dysmorphia, um, like, uh, conditions. And sure, yeah. I think even guys, they go through that a lot. Like, I was obvious, I, not obvious, but, like, I have muscle tone naturally, uh-huh. but and I have, like, pretty big muscles, but I could see in myself, or, like, with my own eyes, that they weren't laying right. And I, ha- I, I wouldn't call it, like, dysmorphia, but I had, a, I had an instinctual, like, need to change the shape of my body. And I wonder if, like, there's, we talk about, I don't remember what it's called, like, maybe your limbic system, where it's, like, your more auton- uh, autonomous functions happening. Sure. Like, I wonder if that's, like, your limbic system telling you, like, hey, we need to, we need to change something in our body. Like, with these girls and women who, um, for social standards, look healthy and normal, like, 
but may 